Good morning. Good morning. Rise up in hope today. Rise up believing. Rise up being encouraged. Rise up shaking anything that isn't pleasant to start a brand new day in. Just shake it off. Rise up in power of the Holy Spirit. Rise up knowing the hope of glory lives inside of you. He's making a way for you. He's working behind the scenes to answer your prayers according to his will. He's trustworthy and he is able. Rise up in hope today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are calling today many because of the one. Many because of the one. We have been in the book of John and studying about the woman at the well, the precious Samaritan woman that was bound, was shameful, was hidden, and Jesus shows up, begins a conversation, and everything changes. We are going to pick up in verse 39. We remember that in verse 20, 29, she leaves, in verse 28, she leaves her water jar because she has just been talking to Jesus and he's telling her everything about her that she thought was in secret. And she leaves her jar, it says, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come see the man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. That was a few days ago. And we pointed out here that this woman who avoided people didn't care anymore. She just went running. And that's what happens when the weight of oppression and the weight of shame and guilt and condemnation, when that weight comes off of you, mm, you can run and run and run. And she did. So we're going to pick up in verse 39. The subtitle says, Many Samaritans believe in Jesus. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Verse 42, then they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. So let's just take a look at those verses. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of what? The woman's testimony. I wrote down, tell your story, many will believe. Share your experience. You never know what's on the other side of that conversation. Jesus has done many things. God, through Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, has performed so many miracles in our lives and it is to his glory that you share that experience. And sometimes it is disappointing because you go to the ones that you think will receive it and you can't wait to share, 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 and nothing. They're just not ready, their hearts are closed. Good for you, moving on. And, and you know, it's like a balloon. It's, you get deflated and that would be a tool in the enemy's hand because then you, you won't go and tell the next person. No. Go and tell. Share, share, share. In Revelations 12, 10, it says, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Takes one spark to light a fire. One person to change a village one Samaritan woman to go back and change a village. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of her testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed for two days. Now, 
there were times Jesus did not stay. But again, God's agenda was to finish the work that Jesus was to do. And we talked yesterday about the harvest. We start, we finish. And he wasn't done yet. So Jesus stays on. And he talks and he sits down and fellowships and probably sit, told everybody else everything they didn't think anybody knew because Jesus knows all the secrets. God knows all the secrets. Nothing is hidden from God. If we truly understand that, that puts us in a different place. It really sheds the light on the bondage because God, your loving Father, sees everything. It's like a parent when a child messes up, a good parent will embrace them and love them and unconditionally throw their arms around them and say, it's going to be all right. It is going to be all right. We love you. That's just like God. So I love the fact that we've been going in and dealing with secrets because secrets are weights. Secrets are weights and they weigh you down. And Jesus didn't come to weigh you down. He came to set you free. So it says here, and because of his words, many more be became believers. I wonder what those words were. I would have liked to be part of those conversations. The study app says the Samaritan woman immediately shared her experience with others. Despite her reputation, many took her invitation and came out to meet Jesus. Perhaps there are sins in our past of which you are ashamed of, but Christ changes us. As people see the changes, they become curious. Use these opportunities to introduce them to the one that set you free. Ah. Uh, it is the most beautiful picture when someone gets set free, gets the revelation that changes their whole countenance. It just changes. And they're radiant. And people that see them are like, that can't be the same person. She just looks way too different. He is so different. What is that? Share why you're different. What happened? Tell every person that you can start a conversation with. And you will overcome by the word of your testimony. I felt very strongly to read, we're gonna to go to the book of Luke for just a minute. This story popped into my spirit as I was preparing for this and I, it's in Luke 17 and it is beginning in verse 11, Luke 17. Beginning in verse 11 it says, Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee, as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed of the love of our Savior. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise up and go. Your faith has made you well. It's a very interesting place that the Lord said to go to. Number one, he was a Samaritan. The Samaritans didn't associate with the Jews. And Jesus is asking, we're not 10 cleansed. Where are the other nine? A lot of times we get our miracle, but we don't testify we don't and there are many reasons again sometimes it's unconscious but many times it's because of fear many times your air has come out of your balloon when you tried to share before 
Oh, they don't want to hear. Oh, God wants you to tell them. Whether or not they hear or not, that's going to be God's call. So tell, tell, tell. And it says here, Jesus healed all ten lepers, but only one returned to thank him. It is possible to receive God's great gifts with an ungrateful spirit. Let me read that again. It is possible to receive God's great gifts with an ungrateful spirit. Nine of the ten men did so. Only the thankful man, however, learned that his faith had played a role in his healing. And only grateful Christians, grateful followers of the way, grow in understanding God's grace. God does not demand that we thank him, but he is pleased when we do so. And he uses our responsiveness to teach us more about himself. Not only was this man a leper, he was also a Samaritan, a race despised by Jews as idolatrous half-breeds. Once again, Luke is pointing out that God's grace is for everyone. And I also was thinking this morning, a lot of times the ones that you least expect it will be the ones that Jesus is after. It's it, A lot of times we presume, and that thing of presumption gets us into trouble. And we it would be best to shake off presuming anything and just doing and just being in the moment of your miracle. And also, I love how it points out to me here, his faith helped him remain healed. He walked out in faith. I wonder how many of those nine men got le leprosy in a week, in two weeks, in three weeks, because... God is after the soul condition of the heart. He can, he can certainly fix my body. He can heal the wounds of my physical body. But the spiritual is much more concerning to him. And this man's faith kept him healed. I know that there's been many times I've watched miracles take place in surroundings. And then give it a little while and some of the people come right back because they're, they're back in bondage. I wonder why. I wonder why. Did they walk it out in faith? Did they thank Jesus? Did they continually thank him? Did they tell people? Or did they allow <laughs> the army of the enemy to win? Because it's not like he's going to lay down and play dead. When you get set free and delivered, he will not lay down. He will come at you on all forces. He will up his ante so you up yours. That's what happens. So we have to um, understand that there are many elements in healing. And this man, one out of ten, one out of ten, I wonder how many people were changed because that one man got healed from within on the outside, on the inside, he was completely healed. And I'm sure that he led many to the healer. So back to John 4. Many because of the one. Oh, I'm a one. You're a one. God deserves your testimony. He deserves the shout to whoever, to whosoever, because that will encourage your faith. Number one, it will bless God. Number two, your faith will increase. Number three, there is no telling how many people will come out of bondage because of your testimony. I encourage you, friends, I encourage you the ones that have been at the well, and the ones that I pray will be sitting at the well for the rest of your days. When Jesus does miraculous things, and it doesn't have to be the big stuff, it could be so internally tiny, but it's tiny internal stuff that explode 
and change villages, towns, nations. To God be the glory for everything that he does inside of me, inside of you. And let it be known in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful day. Many because of the one and you're the one.